Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Game Hunting and in this video we're going to take a look at this big box of games right here which is mostly data set games for the Commodore 64 and the ZX Spectrum. We're going to take a look at some footage out in the wild of picking these up and then we're going to dive into the box and see what's there. So without further ado, let's get started. So I picked these games up from a charity shop which you can see in this footage. There's not a lot of footage out in the wild because picking this stuff up was very impromptu and of the moment. But it was still very cool to find this stuff and especially to find these games to add to my collection. Now this wasn't necessarily an extremely good deal but it was still very cool to find this stuff because it's pretty uncommon in my area. This stuff is around about 30 years old so it's getting a little harder to find this stuff than it used to be. The shop in question had a bunch of cool stuff, they had some more modern stuff like they had a PlayStation console and some modern games as well, but this was the stuff I was very interested in, it's certainly a niche market and I was probably the only person that really wanted to find this stuff out and about so it's good that it went to me because otherwise this sort of thing will probably be thrown out. They had some more Commodore box games that you won't see in the found footage but I was able to pick those up as well and I'm really happy to have this stuff because most of this stuff I didn't already have, at least in this format, so it's super exciting to add this to my collection. So with that said, we're going to get started right now and have a look at some of these boxed games right here, and then we're going to dive into the box of unknown material, and then go from there. So, let's have a look at what I picked up. So what did I pick up? Well, we're going to check that out right now. So first of all, we're going to dive into the boxed Commodore 64 games, and then we're going to check out that big box of unknown items after that, which is going to be very cool to dive into that. This is a box of floppy disk games, big floppy disks, unlike everything else I'm going to show in this video, which will be on cassettes or data sets, I should say. This is marked here as disk on the sticker here from the Commodore 64 slash 128. This is the volume free elite six pack with six awesome games in here. So the games included in this set are Ghosts and Goblins, which I actually do have individually as a cassette or data set game, I should say. There's a James Bond 007 game here, The Living Daylights. There's two Dragon's Lairs games here, which is very cool. A racing game and Paperboy, an isometric classic. I'll give you some more of a look of the packaging right here of this six pack. These multi-packs were very common around this era and they were good value for money. There's a little descriptor of the games on the back here. And then we'll have a look inside of this as well. And inside of here we have a booklet for the games here, about how to run them and things like that. Oh, I ripped the booklet, great. <laughs> so there's the booklet, and here are the discs, the floppy discs. So there's the first floppy disk right there, with some of the games on. And it says on the side here, which games are on which side of the disc. One in three at the back. And here's the second floppy disk here as well. And this one has a Dragon's Lair games on that. And there's the other side of the disk as well. And a nice sleeve here. All right. And it does have a space here for cassettes or floppy disks. And that's common. It's just, you know, they produce one plastic inlay for whatever's going to be in there. So that's that. So don't be confused by seeing the spaces for cassettes in there. It is as it is. All right. A little shame I uh, ripped the manual there, but there you go. So the next one we're going to look at is the Hollywood Commodore 5 Great Games Pack. Five great games. Movie-based games here as well because of the Hollywood gimmick. And as you can see, the characters here are like in a drive-in movie theater. Looking at the screen for the great games included in the set. Rambo, Miami Vice, Platoon. I think I do have Platoon as a box game separately, but I think I'm missing one of the cassettes. Got Great Escape and Top Gun as well. Some classics there as well. Fun and excitement for your Commodore. This is five blockbuster hits. The back of this is completely blank, so no screenshots of the games or anything like that. And inside of here, we have the cassettes for individual cassettes or data sets I should really say. Each of these has different games on them. So as you can see this one here has Platoon. It's a fast load as well. Something I was very jealous of as a Commodore kid. Now it wasn't quite the rivalry you would have overseas for the NES and the Genesis as you would call it or we would call it the Mega Drive. 
but there was a little bit of a rivalry between Commodore kids like myself and people that like the ZX Spectrum or the uh, or the BBC Micro or what have you, you know, whichever was your favourite. Alright, the next one we have here is the Mighty Bomb Jack. And I will actually say I was a, I was a Commodore kid way into the uh, Windows PC days. I was still playing on the Commodore Amiga when, uh, when Windows was getting popular until I eventually, you know, gave up. Uh, so this, you know, look at the cover art on this one. This was very cool. I think this was one of the more expensive games individually. But it was still very cool to grab this. I mean, this wasn't necessarily a great deal, but it's much more exciting for me to find these games in person than it is to buy stuff like this from overseas uh, on the uh, on the internet. All right, we'll have a look at the back of this box as well. There's some images of the game in action. Very cool cover, like I said, on this one. And you've got a little bit of a synopsis here as well for Mighty Bomb Jack. Now, I think the insert of this one is missing. But we do have the data set here for Mighty Bomb Jack. And we do have the manual as well telling you how to load up the game. Images in the manual as well, very nice to see. There is also this note here of how to use the keys, the key controls. It's nice to have the controls because it's very easy to forget those things. It's funny how games these days don't come with manuals. All right, so with that, and that is an awesome cover on Mighty Bomb Jack, we will take a look at the big box of games right here. Big box of mostly Spectrum games, I will say, mostly Spectrum games for this lot, and some booklets here as well. Now, like I said, I was a I was a Commodore kid, and this is definitely, by the way, this is this is a, a box from Next. This definitely isn't a box meant to contain these. I was mostly a Commodore kid, so I don't have a lot of Spectrum stuff at this time. So it's going to be very cool to check this out, see what these games are, see what these unknown cassettes are in the other side here. But we'll have a look at some of these booklets first. Now I think, now I have a boxed Commodore 64, but I don't have a boxed ZX Spectrum. But I imagine this is some of the paperwork that comes with your Spectrum. If you had it complete in box. Advertising with some of the cartridges there. Very cool. Very cool. It's nice stuff to have. If I do grab a box, I can complete it with some of these. Here is the software and peripherals catalog. All of the software and peripherals. Let's have a little look inside of this and see what extra peripherals you can get for your system. Now, to be fair, I was quite jealous of how more compact this system was and of course the fast load because it took quite a while for a, a data set to load on the Commodore 64 like half an hour or so but you know you did have a lot of value cassettes so the reason we had cassettes over floppy disks for the most part over here in the UK is they were cheaper you could get it for very cheap budget ones in like your news agents for example and it was just a really convenient way of doing it but unfortunately they didn't last very long you know, like tapes, videotapes don't last very long. And uh, yeah, there's some uh, look at the arcade games on this system. Comparable graphically. I mean, I might I might anger some people saying that to the Commodore 64, but they had they had basically the same sort of you know capabilities, just whichever was your preference at the time. And I won't I won't go through all of this booklet right here, but we'll have a look at some of the pages of this booklet, some of the games and peripherals available for the system and all that sort of stuff get a printer man remember that printer paper that had the uh, holes on the side to feed it into the printer and remember the days when your PC wouldn't work if you had the printer and you tried to load certain games like that would interfere you know going on the older versions of Windows anyway there's me reminiscing ZX Spectrum introduction I won't go through every page of this, we'll just have a look at the inside here. It's just an introduction, it's more technical stuff. There you go. Imagine that came with it. Here is PCW Games Collection for the Spectrum. Now we might revisit this book in a moment, because I believe this goes with one of the data sets here. So I think this is for that, so I'll put this aside for now. And the last book that we have here is the ZX Spectrum Micro Guide. Quick reference 
and guide to the basics and system operations of the ZX Spectrum. There you go. Kind of cool to get this stuff. Nice little additions to have. Nice uh, shelf eye candy as well alongside the games. Now, I will say, for these loose uh, cassettes, I will be picking up some empty cassette cases to fill these out. So I will, I will shelf these when I um, am able to get those cassette cases. I've ordered some off the internet, empty cassette cases to fill these up again. I know everyone wants me to get to this as well, so we'll get to that. But yeah, here's, the, here's that booklet right there, introduction. Micro guide, all that sort of thing. All right, all right, all right. Is he getting on with it? Get on with it. Okay, I'll get on with it. We'll have a look at some of this stuff right here. Have a look at some of the games, right. First of all, we have Agent X2. Mastertronic release. These guys did a lot of games, ports on the Commodore 64. That was a, a often a value range for Mastertronic as well. They did value ranges like Ricochet. Um, and those were the games you could sort of get from the news agent for really cheap. So that was pretty cool. Side of that one there. Back of it. Sometimes they would have screenshots on the back there. There's the cassette. Oh, there you go. There you go. It was actually it was just improperly, improperly placed back in there. That's how that should have been. But there's some screenshots of the game. And there's Asian X2. All right. All right, there we go. That's a little hard to get back in there because the paper was bent on that. But there you go, it's back in its rightful place. Next game we have here is Androids. Nice. For the ZX Spectrum as well, 16 and 48K. Some information on the back there. 595 it was originally. So these games, because of the format, they were often cheaper than the alternative of floppy disks. There's the... Uh, Set for that one. They often have how to run the games on the inside of the inlay as well to help you out there. Chucky Egg. Very excited to see this in the bunch of games as well. Great game. I did give uh, these a, a little bit of a clean over before I got them ready to show, but some of them have some dirt and grime that's not gonna not gonna come off you know not not realistically without heavy cleaning and I did check that all of the tape heads did seem to be unbroken although some of them you couldn't really tell if the reel was damaged on the, the inside of the cassette but like I mentioned previously due to the age of these games most of these probably aren't going to work anymore just because of the age and the format of this but it's still really cool to have them all right we got hunchback here Joystick compatible, but is it port 1 or port 2? That's me as a Commodore kid talking. For the Spectrum. Love this packaging here. There's the data set for that one. Loading instructions on the inside there. We have Jetpack. There's the side of that one. And we'll have a look at the inside of this one. Love these colourful cases. Ultimate. Play the game. Pretend it's a game. There's me quoting Sewer Shark. Lunar Crabs. Interesting game here. I like the screenshots being right on the front there. They aren't, a show, they aren't afraid to show the game on the front of the case. Which is nice to see. Often they'll show artwork, you know, that you the, the imagination would fill in the gaps, but often they would show artwork on the front. Um, not unlike videotape cases, where nowadays they often show like digital renders. I always liked drawn artwork, but this is cool as well, you know, show the actual game. There's Lunar Crabs. Here we have New Cyclone Attack in isometric perspective. That's like 3D! So there you go. There's that. Little damage to the inlay here, but that's fine. There's the... <laughs> the one took a little bit of a beating. It looked like someone took a bite 
at a cyclone attack. Maybe it was in a cyclone. Who knows? Next up here, we have Penetrator. Amazingly fast arcade action. It also includes a training mode. That's cool. So sticker here. We'll have a look at the cassette. Now I do have a couple of tapes in my Commodore collection that are variants because of the coloration of the tape. They didn't always use the same color when they did multiple runs of the same game. At least in some instances. Match point. Okay. Tennis game. There's that. Spectrum pool. All right. We also have Horizon Software Star Pack. There's that. Okay. Over here we have Iridium Fire Lord. Great games. Got these games on the Commodore 64, but great to have them on the Spectrum as well. All right then, have a look at this. Planetoids. Also, missile. Spectrum there. Now, this will be great when I get the replacement cases for this. Transylvania Tower. Use the tower code to load the game. Good to have the inserts for these. We have booty here. There's some booty. Fire Lord. Alright. This one here is. Now this is unusual, one side of this is for the Commodore 64, the other side is for the Spectrum. This came free of a magazine, but that's interesting. One side for one system, one side for another. Taped to keep it working, it's an old trick from back in the day. Energy Warrior on side B. Uh, must say on the front here somewhere. Side B, there we go. Monica Wan. Money is innocent. Is it though? Speed Jewel. Space Shuttle. This one took a bit of a beating. Super Spy, use Spy as the code to load the game. And, ah, the PCW Games Collection. Type load, which is normally what you would do. Side B, side A. So, I said we would come back to the book. The big book. What games? So, I believe these came in a package, but the box is obviously missing. So, this will tell me what games are on here, I think. And there's a lot of games on this collection. Pursuit Ship, Hunchback, Roulette, Missile Defender, Outlaw, Micro Mouse, Super Lander, Map Quiz, Mini Grand National, Castle, Splash, Robo Tank, Martian Attack, Dogfight, Plane Attack, Trank, Lander, Frogger, Holy Girl, and Bertie Bug. That's a lot of games! That's pretty cool. Big book here for all of that, so I'll try and keep these together. But I won't really have a, a packaged fill of these, I'll just put this in a cassette case and leave them next to each other when I put them away. We have a couple of Swarm. This is obviously a... And what's on the other side of it? It's Wargame. This is obviously a copy tape, very common at the time. 
very common to copy tapes. So that's what would happen there. On the Amiga, it wasn't uncommon for to make a 3.5 floppy for games that you could get on the internet and, uh, and download those shareware games or copy shareware games. That wasn't uncommon, especially after the, you know, when you got the more modern Amigas like the 1200. It wasn't, it wasn't uncommon to share shareware games, but also there were games that were just copied and shared around that way. So a bunch of games on this one as well. So these aren't, you know, these are, it's interesting to see what the person that owned this previously had or got from their, got from their friends or associates, what have you. Wasn't, wasn't an uncommon practice back in the day. And lastly, there's this, which looks like a code to, uh, this, this would be your anti-piracy measure of the day. That's what this would be. So essentially... Let me check. Jet Set Willy. Yes. So do not lose this. So this game was unfortunately not included in the bunch, but this would be a code to... You would need this to get into the game. Code wheels are very common on Amiga games, or not very common, but I did have Amiga games with code wheels and things like that. And there was people that used uh, PCs, uh, IBM PCs or Windows PCs would, would be familiar with this sort of thing as well. It was an anti, it was <laughs> it's ironically to stop this sort of thing. <laughs> so yes, um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. If I do get Jet Set Willy, then uh, I do have one of these to actually play that. So I'll keep this around just in case. Anyway, guys, there you go. Commodore 64 and Spectrum games for this game hunting. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Appreciate you watching. Don't forget to leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. I have been MVL. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you next time.